students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada where spring is in full effect. I hope that all of you are having an awesome week so far. I hope that you're happy and productive and healthy. Welcome, Fuang, hi Angel, nice to see members in the class. RV Love, Nipa, Yash, Elizabeth, good to have you with me. Alexi, nice to have our moderator join us as well to help make this class go smoothly. Students, in this lesson, we are looking at IELTS speaking part one, talking about your health. Now, we talked about this similar uh, uh, part one a few weeks ago. And uh, just a very quick reminder, everybody, that when you're practicing for your IELTS exam, you should revisit topics every couple of weeks. You should not try to look at new topics every single time you practice your speaking. That is a very slow way to improve, to speed up your improvement. You want to revisit topics every few weeks and see how much better you do answering the questions. You can find lots and lots of speaking help, speaking topics on our websites at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, a GLTS help for general IELTS. These are the websites that power these live lessons. They help thousands of students every day to improve on their IELTS exam. This is our academic IELTS uh, website here at aehelp.com. You can join our premium IELTS package by clicking this big red button that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and you get all of our practice exams, materials, uh, interactive courses, tips, strategies. We're an IDP affiliate, we're a British Council partner, an IELTS test registration center. You are in great hands with us. Welcome Carolina, our uh, chat moderator also. <clears throat> nice to have you on board. Good to have many, many more students joining in as we uh, start up this class. That is excellent. Uh, for general IELTS, it's the green background, gieltshelp.com. Again, click this big red button uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It is a one-time payment uh, for lifetime access, and it really doesn't cost too much. Um, it's a uh, different price in different countries depending on your economy, so check out your local cost. And um, hey, if you want to check out uh, all of our success stories, just uh, click on our testimonials and you'll see people from all around the world who have used these materials to pass the IELTS exam. Many of them still use the materials today to continue improving their English. All right, students, uh, on the website, use the code CHOICE9 for a 10% discount that's coming from one of our most recent uh, video releases on YouTube. Uh, you can link the apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, to the websites uh, to learn on the go. Instagram is IELTS underscore A Help, G IELTS Help for schedules and vocabulary. And for questions, uh, send me an email, uh, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Welcome, uh, Fatmanur, back to our group of members. I see that you've been a member, of course, before. It's great. Nice to have you continuing on. Uh, students, Amazon does have our exam books. If you'd like some paper back books, uh, search Amazon for A Helps Academic IELTS and GE Helps General IELTS. Now for this week, uh, we have speaking uh, part one right now. Uh, tomorrow we'll do task two with our members and then we'll do some reading with our subscribers. So uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. It's free, it's easy. It's a very good idea when you're preparing for your exam. Uh, speaking part two, speaking part three on Saturday. Again, uh, students, uh, we always release uh, new videos on YouTube. Uh, this is a great video to practice your speaking. It's a unique uh, karaoke style speaking video. Definitely use it. I just put the link in the chat there. Um, it's very, very good for you. It's very, very useful. Okay, so regular practice, as cliche as it sounds, practice does make perfect. Okay, 
All right, students, let's get into it. I want to start this week strong. I want you to practice. I want you to improve. Our goal for this class is to give you some strategies, to give you examples of high band responses and to give you a chance to uh, practice speaking, answering these questions. So you will actually speak. And even uh, at the beginning here, make sure that you're speaking and repeating. So copy what I say, copy how I say it. Uh, do your best to copy my speed, copy my intonation, pronunciation. Okay, so we want to work on fluency, pronunciation, and intonation. English is a very melodic, rhythmic language. That's why it's uh, so popular for music as well. Um, it has a nice rhythm, nice sound. So you want to copy that. It's a, it's a part of that, that natural English communication and it's part of your pronunciation score. All right, students. So uh, you get to your IELTS speaking test. Register for your test early. Start preparing for IELTS months in advance uh, if possible. Okay. Do not leave this exam till the last minute. It is not an easy test. It is not a simple test. And you definitely want to get the best score possible. So even if you have good English and you think, hey, easy peasy, I got this. I highly, highly recommend uh, starting to prepare for your IELTS exam at least three months before you sit the official test, okay? You have to be familiar with the test. There are some unique aspects. It's a three hour sitting exam, 15 minute oral interview. It's um, comparable to a university level exam for sure, uh, a final exam, okay? So prepare early, all right? For university, you prepare the entire semester for that exam, right? And language, of course, requires just that much more. So you prepare early and you register as early as possible and then you go to your exam center um, early as well. So one hour, two hours before your test starts, you get really comfortable, go for a snack there, check out the building um, and find other candidates to practice with before your uh, speaking starts to really warm up your language, okay? All right, Romelia, good to have you on board here. Okay. Yeah, I agree, Romelia. If you can do more than three months, absolutely, six months, even a year. Depends on your level and depends on your goal, right? What you want to get. So um, 20 minutes before your speaking starts, you go and you register, you show your ID, you leave all of your possessions except your clothes, a bottle of water, a pen, pencil, eraser. Um, and that's about it. Uh, and then you take that with you 20 minutes later to the exam room where you are met by an examiner. The examiner will most likely be a native speaker. They could be British, American, Australian, New Zealander, okay, um, Indian. India has the official language, English as its second language, so it's considered native language to India as well contrary to uh, some beliefs, okay? So you will have a native English speaker and um, they will be experts in not only English, but on how to measure your speaking ability, okay? And just in case they don't do a great job, you get recorded so that another person can listen to what you're saying. It's technical, everybody, it's not emotional, okay? It's not about your feelings, it's not about the feelings of the examiner. It's not about what the examiner looks like or sounds like or whether they're grumpy or smiley. It's about your score. That's what you're focusing on. Your examiner is not an ESL teacher. They're not an English teacher. Many of them haven't actually taught English. They are simply an examiner, okay? They're not there to help you speak English. They're not there to give you vocabulary to speak English. They're there to measure you, so be ready for that. Okay, when you walk into the uh, exam room, it's important. It is, you know, it is important to have the right idea in your head when you go in there. And it's not to scare you, it's just that you understand the right attitude, the right approach to this situation. Okay. Um, Fat Manur, uh, if you cough, Fat Manur has a question here. Uh, it says, I am sick and my exam is very soon. It will affect my score if I cough during the exam. Uh, Fat Manur, um, yeah, so uh, coughing is not the best. Going to your exam sick is not the best. 
if you are coughing unstoppably, okay, or continuously, the examiner can actually ask you to leave. So even though we're no longer in the COVID danger uh, area or zone anymore, um, they do not like uh, people going to the exam sick, and I believe they still ask you how you're feeling. So uh, if you're sick, you show up sick, looking sick, coughing, they can send you home. It's your responsibility uh, to uh, be realistic, and if you're feeling ill, you need to call the exam center and potentially reschedule, because if you don't and you show up sick, they have the right to say, no thank you, come back another time, okay? So uh, careful with that, everybody. And I know there's a lot of flus going around right now, this post-COVID sickly time that we're in. Okay, so uh, good question, Fat Manur. Yeah, coughing is not a good situation, okay? If you cough once or twice during your speaking, you're not going to lose band scores, but if you look sick and you're coughing away, the examiner might just say, I'm sorry, we will have to stop the exam. Uh, it seems that you're not feeling well. I would like to ask you to please go home and come back uh, once you're feeling better. They have that privilege, okay? All right, um, so uh, let's do this, okay? You walk in, the examiner says, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is, oops, sorry. Uh, my name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that. Kindu Gill, uh, you cannot book with the British Council anymore in India because IDP has bought all of the exam centers in India. Okay. All right, Alexi, our moderator says, Yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I have used to schedule the exam. Please have a look at my credentials. And with an exclamation mark, I like that exclamation mark. Exclamation mark is this here, uh, because it means Alexi is saying this with a nice loud voice. And that's absolutely uh, how you should start. Do not use the voice of a mouse. Okay, don't be like, yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I used to schedule the exam. Please have a look. Okay, if the exam examiner can't hear you, your mark will go down. They might ask you once, please speak up, but they're not going to remind you again. If you keep speaking quietly, you get low scores. So it's a good idea to start nice and loud, full of confidence, okay? With a smile, Alexi, absolutely. Yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I have used to schedule the exam. Please have a look at my credentials. Nice, loud, confident, with a smile, okay? Very good. All right. Irene says, yes, gladly, this is my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please take a look at it. Okay. Good, Irene. That works. That's good. Nice full sentence answer, okay? All right. Good, good. Next question. What is your full name? Again, focus on full sentence answers. Give me a nice full sentence answer to this question. What is your full name? And they will ask you that while you hold your passport. They want to see your face. They want to say see how you say your name and they want to match your name with your passport. KB says, I did my exam on the 25th with the mask. Q card was described the most difficult thing uh, you have faced and achieved. Explain it too. Okay, thanks for sharing that, KB. All right. Yes, Kaju, you are allowed to take a bottle of water with you, and I highly recommend it. It should not have any writing on it. It should not have any labels, but you're allowed the water bottle, and um, I highly recommend taking a water bottle with you. Prasad, a couple of spelling mistakes will not reduce your score in the writing. Okay. All right, Kindu says, yes, here it is. I used my passport to book the exam. That's for the previous. That's good. Amra uh, says, 
My first name is Amrush and my last name is Abbasav. Please just call me by my first name. Uh, usually in English, uh, Amra will repeat it. Amra, I think, is what you meant to right there. Um, so usually when we say, please call me by my first name, you can stop there. It's okay. A lot of people do. A lot of people will actually repeat their name again just to help the listeners. So uh, my first name is Amra and my last name is Abasov. Please just call me by my first name, Amra. Okay. So a lot of people will, will repeat that. And it's good to repeat that because this is a stranger. They will probably refer to your uh, first name again. So it's good to repeat it. All right. Our member Domenico has this to say. Uh, Domenico says, my given name is Domenico and my family name is Lafauci. Please refer to me as Dominic, which is the English version of my name. Okay, good. Yeah, if you like being called by the English version of your name, sure, why not? Okay. All right. Um, Angel is asking this question. It's a good one for this situation. So Angel is saying, I would appreciate if you call me by my given name, Margin. Um, yeah, that's okay, Angel. I think it's unnecessary. It's a little bit, a um, little bit awkward, slightly awkward, but it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, please call me. In these kinds of situations, please call me would be the most common, most natural way to uh, tell a stranger that's a professional uh, what we want to be called, okay? So it's polite, it's respectful, and it's the most common way. Please call me, okay? All right. Now, the examiner will say, I will uh, ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you like to do when the weather is nice? Okay. Give me a full sentence answer uh, for this one. What do you like to do when the weather is nice? Okay. Uh, Chahal has uh, this to say. Whenever I see the weather is nice, then I mostly plan to go out with my friend, which gives me internal happiness. Okay, so Chanal, this answer would be about a band five. Because of uh, awkward grammar, um, incorrect word choice, and lack of detail which would be also lack of fluency, okay? So this is why the examiner would be thinking about a band five for this, all right? So let me give you the corrected version, uh, Chahal, okay? So a band nine would sound something like this. Uh, whenever I see that the uh, weather is good, let's replace nice with good, like uh, sunny, and uh, 32 degrees. Okay, so let's quantify it. I usually, mostly plan is a little bit different. I usually plan to go out with my uh, friend Sneha. Okay, let's say, for example, right? So who is this friend? You're talking about one friend. You should name the friend. My friend Sneha, who lives next door. Um, I always uh, feel happy when we go for a walk together and chit chat. Uh, we did this just yesterday at the park near my home. Okay, so that would be your band nine because it's original, fluent, accurate, with good detail, good vocabulary. Okay, so it checks off all the boxes the examiner is looking for, all right? Again, students, remember, repetition. Whenever I see the weather is good, like sunny and 32 degrees, I usually plan to go out with my friend Sneha, who lives next door. I always feel happy when we go for a walk together and chit chat. We did this just yesterday at the park near my home, OK? 
okay? And if I want to choose a word better than good, when we're talking about the weather, we often say when the weather is fair, okay? Fair weather, good weather, okay? Mariam says, actually, there are numerous tasks which um, I'm into doing when it's nice out, like sunny, um, such as going for a walk or hanging out with friends or other outdoor activities like uh, playing a good game of football. Okay, Mariam, I'm correcting you in real time. You need to finish your ideas. You can't just say, or other activities. Like what? Okay, uh, students, um, don't leave the examiners hanging, okay? So this is an important tip for everybody, all right? Uh, you have to complete your ideas, okay? High band scores um, are given for good communication. This means complete ideas, okay? So here's an important tip. Don't use words like uh, thing, something. I do lots of things. Okay. Um, don't use, uh, for instance, and so on. Okay. It's not good communication because your listeners thinking and so on what? Like and, and so on. Okay like everybody else in the world, right? We all do so on things when the weather is nice. So uh, tip, avoid ambiguity, okay? Uh, does everybody understand this word, ambiguity? Okay, ambiguity means it's unclear, it's unknown, okay? It's leaving us with question marks, okay? So do not have ambiguity in your communication, all right? Carolina says, thumbs up, okay? Um, all right, next question. How about when the weather is bad, right? It's connected, it's a conversation, it's a communication, so uh, if the examiner is asking you about good weather, then it's quite possible that in the next step, the examiner will ask you about bad weather. Um, expect these contrasts, so good, bad. Weekends, weekdays, okay? So contrasting ideas, all right? Think about that. All right, Fuang says, Well, uh, whenever it rains dogs and cats, I just want to let my hair down in my bedroom and watch a flick on TV. Like yesterday, I spent my whole evening enjoying the film uh, Gang Gang Yu Hui uh, while it was raining outside. Okay. All right. Uh, Fuang, this would be about a 7.5 band, okay? Because what the examiner is thinking here is good vocabulary, good fluency, good complex grammar. So 7.5 is between good and very good user of English, okay? So good fluency, good grammar, good vocabulary. The reason why you're lo losing one and a half marks is because incorrect um, expression. I'll explain that in a second and awkward double up of idioms, which is unnatural, okay? So, uh, Fuang, just a couple of corrections here, all right? Um, so here, whenever it rains dogs and cats, um, cats and dogs, and yes, it does matter in this case, so I know it's such an awkward, it's like, ah, oh, really? But yes, uh, cats and dogs, okay, not dogs and cats. I don't know why, but it's just awkward when you reverse it, okay, cats and dogs. So whenever it rains, cats and dogs, I just want to let my hair down in my bedroom. Um, we usually avoid using complex idioms right after each other because it starts to sound weird, okay? 
It's like, why are you using so many idioms so closely packed together? Idioms are usually spread out in communication. Generally, people will not group them, okay? It leads to kind of this awkward, it actually, I guess, because it makes coherence more difficult, right? So once we start grouping a lot of idioms, it starts to be like, what are you saying? Cats and dogs and letting hair down? Um, so here, you just want to stay with one idiom, okay? Or spread it out. Okay, so, well, whenever it rains cats and dogs, I just want to relax uh, in my bedroom and watch a flick on TV like yesterday. Um, I let my hair down and I spent my whole evening enjoying the film Gang Gang Yu He while it was raining outside, right? So notice how I used it again later, but I, I spaced the idioms, right? So now it would be a band nine level as long as you're saying it fluently. Okay. All right. Makes sense, right? So cats and dogs, not dogs and cats. Okay. And don't group idioms too tightly together, Fuang. Okay. Careful with that. Okay. You're very v welcome, KB. Thank you for shouting that at me. I appreciate that. Okay. Fuang says, got it, sir. All right. Uh, Chayani has this answer. Let's take a look at that real quick because it's a good one. Um, so uh, take a look at this. So Chayani says, in contrast, uh, when the weather is gloomy, I tend to stay at my dorm because uh, it is hazardous uh, to go out in a, a torrential uh, downpour. Yesterday it was raining cats and dogs and I just took uh, 40 winks for an hour uh, in my bedroom. Same thing, right? Um, so watch that grouping. And I just took a break uh, for an hour in my bedroom, okay? Uh, but this part here, Chayani, the in contrast is really smart. So that's a very good way to link your thoughts and show the examiner that you understand that the IELTS speaking interview is a conversation where you have to link ideas and it's not just a question and answer, question and answer, okay? So, good, all right, I really like that, that's good. All right, now, uh, let's talk about health, okay? And so, let's get into it. Um, health is a very popular topic, it's um, very prominent. So IELTS does like to think of topics that are very common around the world and especially of course with the uh, global events in the last couple of years. Um, health is a major uh, point of discussion and um, people expect that one can talk in English and talk about health if they can talk in English because it is such a popular topic. So you're, you should be hearing lots of information on health and vocabulary. And so the examiner will say, uh, let's talk about health. Now, as soon as you hear this topic health, okay, what kind of words um, come to mind? So again, remember that word association game? Anybody try that since I last suggested this? So I said uh, last week, that when you practice for the IELTS and you get topic words like health, right, then you should play an association game where you connect health to other words that come to mind, okay? So Romelia says prevention, sure, intervention. Uh, checkup, yeah, medical checkup, sure. Uh, nutritious meals, nutrition, mm-hmm, absolutely. Uh, soreness, yeah, sure. So ailment, yeah. Fitness, very good. Uh, healthy food or a healthy diet, exercise. Okay, illness, active. Fruits and vegetables, yes, sure. Vitamins or vitamins as the British say, okay. Uh, pandemic, yes, epidemic. Okay, sure, prescriptions. Okay. 
<laughs> couch potato, Romelia. Not coach potato, couch potato. Right? Okay, good. Yeah, so all of those words should be flashing through your head in the IELTS exam here. All right, let's answer a few of these questions. So here we go, everybody. How often do you exercise? Give me a nice full sentence uh, answer for this one. I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare. Okay. Um, Okay, there's my answer, um, and this would be a band nine answer, okay? So again, the question, speak and repeat. How often do you exercise? I regularly work out at home and at my local gym. I regularly work out both at home and at my local gym. I have an exercise bike in my living room that I use for at least five hours a week, and I go to the fitness center down the street three times a week. This keeps me in good shape. Notice the paraphrasing. So exercise, right? Work out. Okay. Use of uh, the uh, subordinating conjunction, both and. Okay. Uh, I've got my local gym. Okay. And then I paraphrase it. Fitness center. A gym is also a fitness center. Okay. That's what you're looking for. All right, Harpreet Singh, a very honest and good answer. Careful with honest answers, students. They can be tricky at times. Sometimes it's better just to make it up. Um, Harpreet uh, says, Honestly, I don't exercise as much as I should. With my busy schedule, it can be hard to find time to fit in a workout. However, I do try to go for a brisk walk or a jog at least once a week. Very nice. Nice use of vocabulary. That could be a band nine, Harpreet. If you say that nice and smooth and fluent, perfect grammar, nice natural language in English, good connections, say it well, and it's a band nine caliber answer. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, Fatmanur, our member. Dennis. Fatmanur says. I try to do exercise every day. I have online yoga class at 8 a.m. every morning. Sometimes uh, I oversleep and miss it. It helps me unwind a bit and make a good start to the day. It helps me unwind a bit and um, start the new day so it helps me unwind a bit and start the new day okay so helps me will modify unwind and helps me start the new day okay um, here oversleep present tense Fatmanur because you're talking generally so you oversleep yesterday or you overslept yesterday you oversleep today you might oversleep tomorrow so it happens every now and again if uh, if an action sometimes happens use the present general tense because it's sometimes as in the past present and future so it's general present tense okay all right good good um let's um let's jump to this conditional question here if you are stressed what do you do okay all right, give me a nice full uh, sentence answer for this one.
All right. Here we go. Uh, when I'm feeling stressed, like after a hard day of work or study, I like to take a hot bubble bath to unwind and let go of negative thoughts. I do this maybe once or twice a week. You can even say, I'm sure I will be having a hot bath after this exam. <laughs> okay, why not, right? It's reality. Okay, so uh, again, uh, when I am feeling stressed, notice that instead of the if I am feeling, I use when I am feeling because when is used for a real condition, okay? When it's real, not just unreal. If is used for both real and unreal conditions. And when we have situations that are real, like you do actually have that situation, and I would argue that most of us do have uh, stress at least at some point in our week or month. Uh, it's good to switch to use the real conditions. So show the examiner that you recognize the difference between the use of if as just a general conditional for real unreal and the use of when which is used specifically for real conditions. So when I am feeling stressed like after a hard day of work or study, I like to take a hot bubble bath to unwind and let go of negative thoughts. I do this maybe once or twice a week. I'm sure I will be having a hot bath after this exam, okay? And if you really want to be uh, specific, you could say to relinquish my um, thoughts of failure. But you shouldn't. You should feel good after your exam, especially if you've prepared. Relinquish means to let go. All right. Okay. And Carolina has included the emoji of the bat, the bubble bath. That's great. I didn't know they had a bubble bath emoji. Are you kidding me? That's great. All right. Um, so that's your answer there. Let's take another students. Okay. All right, Charmin has this answer for us. When I feeling, uh, Charmin, you need the M. When I am feeling stressed, I like to do some enjoyable work, uh, such as listen to some music, okay? You've got the wrong verb there. Uh, listening to music would not be considered work. I like to do some enjoyable activity or hobby, such as um, listening to some music and watching, you need a parallel grammar here, uh, a fun movie, uh, maybe a comedy if you're talking about a fun movie, okay. At times, I go to my friend's home to relax and have a good talk over a hot cup of tea. Okay, so the original one, band four, lots of mistakes, okay, with grammar, uh, accurate language, coherent language. So you need to really make sure that you're practicing correct language use, vocabulary, grammar. Get feedback, okay? All right, Charmin. So when I'm feeling stressed, I like to do some enjoyable hobbies, such as listening to some music or watching a comedy. At times, I go to my friend's home to relax and have a good talk over a hot cup of tea. All right. Okay. BM Mehdi Hassan says When I am feeling stressed, I take my mobile phone, lay on my bed, and watch a funny video or a movie, which helps me to feel better, okay? BM, lots and lots of little mistakes there again. So note my corrections, make those corrections. Otherwise, again, it's like a band four, okay? 
All right, uh, let's try this question, students. Um, have you ever worried about your health? Okay, so notice that the questions in IELTS speaking part one um, seem to get a little bit more and more challenging because they do, okay? So the IELTS starts easy and then it progressively uh, becomes more and more challenging. It is actually called a progressive exam. Okay, or um, what's the word, scaled exam? No, there's a, another word for it, but it does get more and more difficult, okay, the further you go. Now, in the speaking, the examiner will adjust slightly um, based on your English. So if they feel that you have band six level English or a band five, they'll ask you some easier questions throughout the speaking in part three as well. Part two, no. Part two is the same type of question for everybody, but part one, part three, they can adjust their questions a bit so that you don't really feel uh, too awkward, okay? If you have good English, band seven, eight, nine, then expect that you will get some more and more challenging questions. In fact, if the examiner is trying to decide between a band eight, band nine, then you might expect some very strange questions for part three, okay? You're like, you'll be like, what? <laughs> Who asks that? Um, they, they don't, it's not because they lost their mind or they've gone crazy, but that's their instructions. If you feel the student is a band eight, ask them challenging, unexpected questions, okay? That's part of the instructions. So, um, so if you're getting some very strange questions in part three, that's usually a good sign, okay? But do expect that you get more and more challenging questions for part one, right? Okay, um, so nice full sentence for this one, everybody. Have you ever worried about your health? Okay. Aman says, definitely because I am a health conscious person and most of the time I try to get a healthy diet. Apart from this, I also do exercise twice or thrice a week. Okay, um, Aman, this is a half response, okay? And in everyday communication, we do this frequently where we only give the uh, result because or the causality. However, students in the IELTS, um, you definitely want to use the question in your answers, especially for questions like this, which are present perfect. So definitely, and watch your, your capital students, always practice good capitalization. Definitely, I have been concerned about my health in the past because I'm a health conscious person. So Aman, notice how right away now we're using the present perfect. I have been concerned about my health. You will get more points when the examiner hears that language, okay? So definitely, I have been concerned about my health in the past because I'm a health conscious person and most of the time, I try to uh, not get, because you don't get a healthy diet, you eat a healthy diet. I try to eat, and we don't say healthy diet. I try to eat healthy. Apart from this, I also do exercise uh, twice or thrice a week. We don't actually use the word thrice in our communication. Um, we more naturally say three times. And I don't know about the British or the Australians, but definitely Americans, Canadians don't use thrice so much, okay? All right, it's a little bit off topic or a little bit vague as well, Amon, so just be careful with those and use the question, okay? All right. Pavneet says, I'm a health conscious person. I always tr keep track of signs of any indications of bad health. Okay, let me um, make some corrections here, Pavni. Okay. So, first of all, Pavni, you have to use the same grammar. So, if the pres, so if the question is present perfect, have you ever worried? 
You should use present perfect. If the examiner does not hear present perfect used in response to present perfect, they start to think, hmm, does this student actually know complex grammar? Are they able to use present perfect? Native English speakers, most of the time, will use present perfect to answer a question in present perfect, okay? All right, so um, even just a simple present perfect, like, yes, I have. Yes, I have. I'm a health conscious person. I always keep track of signs of, uh, I always keep track of signs of any indication of bad health. A little bit wordy. So I always keep track of signs of bad health. It would be enough, but okay, sure. Any indications of bad health as our body. Um, don't generalize. Students, do not shift your pronouns. This is a very important tip, okay? Uh, there are multiple reasons for this. Uh, simply, it's just bad grammar, or sorry, bad communication. So tip, do not shift your pronoun. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? So here, the example is, I worry about my health because um, our body gives signals uh, like when you have a headache. Okay, so this is, uh, this is considered poor communication because I have I here, okay, and then I have my here, and then I have our here, and then I have you here, okay? So I'm shifting my uh, pronouns and that's a problem because that's very confusing for your listener. By the end of it, they're like, are you talking about us, you, me, we, everybody, aliens, my neighbor's cat? What's going on, right? So clear communication, rule of thumb, in part one, use the personal pronouns, I, me, my, myself. The questions are generally about you, so pay attention. You'll notice that the examiner is asking about you, your, yourself, right? So it's I, me, my, myself, okay? All right? Chayani says, cat in a box, right? So uh, you have to be careful, okay? Don't do that. It happens. It's an awkward mistake. It's not good communication, okay? You will lose scores if you go that way, and it will uh, ruin your own thinking and communication, right? So uh, use the present perfect. Yes, I have. I am a health-conscious person. I always keep track of signs of any indications of bad health as my body gives me signals when I have to, signals when I have to, that I have to, have to recognize. Uh, for example, acne on my face indicates that I have bad digestion and I need to pay more attention to what I eat. Uh, this happened to me uh, a week ago when I um, ate a hamburger at McDonald's and then a whole chocolate bar right after, okay? That would be a better response, Pavneet, okay? So yes, I have, I am a health conscious person. I have always kept, let's use more present perfect, track of signs of any indications of bad health as my body gives me signals that I have to recognize. For example, acne on my face indicates I have bad digestion and I need to pay more attention to what I eat. This happened to me a week ago when I ate a hamburger at McDonald's and then a whole chocolate bar right after. Um, then I washed it down with a liter of Coca-Cola. 
don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> it sounds amazing, but don't do it. Uh, I will get acne on my face if I do that. <laughs> okay. And probably have digestion problems. Good visual language, students. Good uh, explanations, examples that we can empathize with. I'm sure most of us have had a situation of uh, hamburger, chocolate, Coca-Cola in our lives or something similar. And if we can create that connection with the examiner, that empath uh, empathy of ideas, yeah, for sure, that will be good, okay? All right, everybody, um, let's uh, volunteer, let's practice these, okay? Uh, <laughs> Sheila, <laughs> good question. Sheila's asking, what does wash down mean? Yeah, uh, washed it down. Uh, washed it down literally means like I have a mouthful of food and I take a drink and I go glug, 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 glug to get it into my belly, okay? So to consume, right? So it's in my mouth and then I, mm, I wash it down, okay? So there's your, I don't have food, but uh, you get the idea, okay? So yeah, washing it down is high consumption, high dairy. Yeah, it's a fast drink, lots of fast drinking. Okay, good, good. I'm happy to see that you're paying attention to those details, right? That's very nice natural English, washing it down with a bottle of, um, of Coca-Cola, right? Or washing down a person's sadness with a bottle of wine. Don't do that, don't do that. Okay, uh, be healthy. Okay, everybody, so um, here we go. Uh, volunteering for uh, speaking. If Carolina or uh, Alexi or Chen, oh, it's already there. You're so fast, Carolina and Chen. I don't even have time to tell you. Okay, so to volunteer, follow Carolina and Chen's instructions in the chat uh, and what you see here on the screen. So go to aehelp.com. I mentioned this at the start of the class. These are the websites that we have for you that power these live lessons. Okay, Ariane, it is absolutely not easy to score a band nine, even for a native speaker. You have to really practice, okay? All right, so go to the website, uh, aehelp.com, to join the premium version of the course. Click that big red button, it is worth it. Or you can click that big red button there as well at the end of the video, right up there. Um, so click it, join it, enjoy it, and um, now, when you're in your My Student account, uh, go to uh, Student Partner Speaking. You have computer-based practice exams. You've got an, a full course. You've got uh, uh, IELTS exam study plans. Um, go to the Student Partner Speaking. That's what we will use right now. Uh, accept that you're responsible for your speech, for your speaking. And then you will see me in here um, as master. Okay, that's my handle in here, easy to recognize. It's just all big letters, master, like this. And uh, and then uh, just uh, send me a message. So right beside my uh, name, you'll see uh, an envelope like this. And uh, message me, just say, I want to volunteer, let me try. Okay, and then uh, we, can, uh, we can get into it, okay? All right. Uh, let's, let's kind of start from the bottom of the list. And let's try to start with someone that we haven't actually talked to in the past. So definitely let's give uh, some new visitors a shot here. Uh, Apek Shaya, uh, let me just put my headphones on here. And I think Apek Shaya seems to be a new name that I haven't uh, come across yet. So let's see if we can reach out to Apek Shaya and uh, start this. So Apek Shaya, are you ready? Okay, um, some of you might need to use a VPN for this, depending on what country you're in. There's always uh, government blocks going on for different countries, and uh, so, yes. Hopefully, we'll see that come to an end in our lifetime. Okay, up Shaya. Hi, up Shaya. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm very good. And how, what about you? I'm doing good as well. Thank you for asking. Apekshaya, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time we're talking to each other. Am I correct? 
Yes, sir. It is my first time. Okay, good for you. And may I ask, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Nepal. From Nepal? Are you in Kathmandu? Yeah. Okay, that was just a guess. It's maybe one of the only cities I'm familiar with in, uh, in Nepal. Um, and uh, Apekshaya, why are you taking the IELTS exam? I'm taking this exam because uh, after my uh, board exams plus two, I want to study in uh, outer country, foreign country. So, good correction. Yeah, outer country doesn't make much sense, but foreign country does. Good. Do you have any idea of what country you'd like to go to? Maybe Canada, Australia, or yeah. Okay. All right. The biggest difference between Canada and Australia. One is warmer, the other is colder. I'm in Canada, it's colder. <laughs> Australia is warmer for the most part. So um, think about, do you want cooler weather or warmer weather? Um, all right, uh, Apekshaya, let's get into it. Are you ready for some questions? Yes, sir, I'm ready. All right, then here we go. Uh, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification? Yes, sir, of course you can see. Here it is. What is your full name? My name is Apikchaya Bhandari and in short, you can call me Apu. Okay, Apu. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you like to do when the weather is nice? Uh, since I'm very close to nature, so I would like to go out with my friends and my family and also I would like to uh, listen to the music and uh, if I'm at home then I love to enjoy the movies. All right. Apu, I'm going to stop there for a second and just give you feedback. All right. So your um, speaking so far is a six. Okay. But I think you can do better. I think you can get a seven, even a 7.5. You just have to adjust a little bit. So first, I know you're a little bit nervous. It's the first time you're doing this and that's okay. One way to become less nervous is to practice like this. So good for you. Um, that will happen. Uh, the reason you get a six is because even though you're fluent, some of your grammar, some of your language use is a bit awkward, it's a bit inaccurate, and your coherence, uh, when I asked you this question, is a bit low. Let me give you more detailed feedback. So um, firstly, when I asked, may I see your identification, you said, yes, sir, you can see, here it is. It's, it's a bit strange. So make sure that for this question, you give very clear, natural, accurate English, okay? There are many, many ways to answer this question naturally. Make sure you use one of those. So yes, sir, you can see it here. Uh, please take a look. This is the passport I used to register. Um, Okay, so I'm guessing when you're saying this, you're, you're imagining holding it up. So if you say, yes, sir, you can see it here. Uh, please take a look. Take a look. Uh, this is my passport. Okay, so can you just try that one more time? Um, so yes, sir, you can see it here. Please take a look. This is my passport. Yes, sir, you can see it here. This is my passport. Please take a look. You have to finish that, okay? Please take a look. Okay, good. And pace yourself, right? So yes, sir, you can see it here. Please take a look. This is my passport. Don't rush, okay? All right, um, the question here, what do you like to do when the weather is nice? You said, um, since I'm very close to nature, I would like to go out with my family, okay? There's a couple of mistakes here. So firstly, use the question, especially in the beginning, um, in fair weather. Okay, that's the very simple way to reflect that question. So um, in fair weather, since I'm very close to nature, I like to go out with family, not would like to. Okay, would like to is hypothetical. Here, you're not giving a modal or a hypothetical situation. You're giving an actual situation because this is what you do when the weather is nice. So I like to go out with my family. And then you said, and if I'm at home, 
that's kind of strange. We're talking about nice weather. That would mean that maybe the weather's not so nice. It's it's awkward to say that you know I'm staying at home. It means that you're not really paying attention to the question. Uh, instead, give an example. Okay, so I like to go out with my family. Um, I went uh, for a two-hour hike um, uh, in the uh, forest behind my home uh, yesterday with my brother. Okay, so that would make a lot more sense. So let's just try that one. Okay, Apu. Um, in fair weather, since I'm very close to nature, I like to go out with my family. Uh, I went for a two-hour hike in the forest behind my home yesterday with my brother. Try it. not sure if we've lost a poo maybe we've lost a poo it sounds like you're still there I'm not sure um, but anyway that's the right idea okay a poo so that's the correction that you want to make uh, let me try somebody else a poo if you're there I'm not sure if you're there I'm not sure if you're having some connectivity issues it's fine um, but uh, make sure to practice that okay let's give theory a chance here uh, theory are you ready and of course I will be looking for returning students as well everybody um, here I want to give a couple of maybe potentially new students a chance as well. So Apu, good luck with your um, with your plans to uh, go abroad for study. Thumbs up, okay? Everybody support each other, okay? All right. Theory. Thanks for the thumbs up, Fuang. That's great. Okay. Theory. I hear that you picked up, but I'm not sure if you're there. Now, um, everybody who's in here with me today, make sure that you have good connections. Ideally, you're using a Wi-Fi or a LAN connection. Okay. Theory, if you can hear me, let me know. All right. And uh, if uh, you are in some countries, you might need to check VPNs, okay? I'm in Canada. If you're routing through China or certain Middle Eastern countries, you can have issues with these kinds of chat interfaces, okay? Uh, also, sometimes you might just want to refresh, refresh this page. I'm going to see if I can reach out to a regular student that we can connect with, um, and then we'll see if it's my end or your end or everybody's end. Uh, let's try Juan. Juan's usually pretty good. Juan's uh, usually in uh, Argentina. Juan, are you ready? Let's see if we can connect with Juan from Argentina. Okay, and again, students, one way to do it is check with somebody else. So before you send me a message and wait to see what happens, um, send somebody else a message. Uh, if uh, our moderators are in here, like Carolina or Chen, then you might want to try with them first. Hello. Hi, Juan. Hello, Adrian. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right. How is the Patagonia region today? Uh, it's getting colder and colder every day uh, because we're in autumn, but that is normal. Mm -hmm. But I found out that I really love this weather because during summer, uh, it was uh, this last summer was really was really cruel for me mm -hmm. but I, I'm loving this weather so far yeah I can empathize with you I'm a very active person I like running I like sports I like to be active outdoors I find that when the summers are really hot it's hard to be active um, because it's mm -hmm. so exhausting so I, I like uh, a bit of a cooler um, climate as well myself I prefer it and I'm sure Patagonia is just beautiful this time of the year so yeah and All it's right. better for working out and for working in general. Yeah, to be active, yeah, in general, being yeah, active, exactly. absolutely, yeah. Okay, um, Juan, let's jump into some questions. So uh, clearly the uh, chat's working well when the connection is good. I can hear you like you're sitting yeah. next to me. Um, all think. right, <laughs> so let's jump into it. Let's, um, uh, let's talk about health. How often do you okay. exercise? I usually exercise every day. I hit the gym three times a week. 
and the rest of the days of the week I usually do some wave lifting at home with some dumbbells or go for a, for a walk to the park. Yesterday for example I couldn't go to the gym and I go I went for a walk for an hour and a half and then I enjoy the the autumn weather. If you are stressed, what do you do? When I'm stressed, I if it's because of a problem, uh, I usually um, try to see the situation from another perspective and uh, to calm down and that helps me solve the problem. Sometimes I am stressed because I'm just tired, so in those cases I like to take a, a shower and a short nap or maybe watch an episode of my favorite series. Can you uh, give example, me an week, example of your, uh, can you give me an example of your um, former uh, answer? Mm, which one? Uh, the one relating to um, stress because of a problem. Sure, uh, for example, um, yes, for example, my car is in, uh, isn't working right now, uh, the battery I, I think is dead and I was feeling, um, a couple of weeks ago I was feeling really I was feeling really stressed because I don't have any money to buy a new one and I really need to buy a new one um, but um, I I actually, is, I'm using my brother, my brother's charger and I found out that I can really use just that and charge my battery and it's still working. So, but uh, I had to see the situation from another perspective. I, I know it's, it's, okay. it's a small problem. Let's go to part two. All right, uh, so uh, Juan, good. I'm pushing you. Um, it's what I uh, mentioned to everybody um, a few minutes ago that uh, if you are obviously a good user of the English language, Expect the unexpected. The IELTS examiner has lots of questions. They don't just have one set of questions. They have a book full of questions or a binder full of questions. And they have flexibility to ask follow-up questions. So they don't have to stay with those exact questions, okay? Now, part one, they usually won't do that, Juan. So part one, usually they will just go through the questions because they don't want you to freak out or to get really nervous. But I know that you volunteer regularly, so I decided to challenge you a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and still, you did a very good job. So I think you're clearly a band eight uh, by now and uh, some of your answers are an 8-5 some of them are a 9 so you want to you know what you want to work towards Juan is to consistently produce band 9 level answers um, your first response when you uh, answered the question of how often do you exercise and you said I usually exercise every day I hit the gym three times a day very nice expression so notice this one students hit the gym that's very natural in English we'll say I hit the gym it literally means you yeah go to the gym and you do the weights. Then you continue to show good vocabulary in this topic by saying weightlifting and dumbbells, okay? Uh, dumbbells students are uh, a specific type of weight that are that looks like that, okay? Um, so those are dumbbells that you lift with your hands. So, uh, so very good use of vocabulary there. So that was a band nine. And then I asked you this conditional. So I said, uh, you know, um, uh, if you're stressed, what do you do? And then you gave me again a very good answer. So you said when I'm stressed and you took a little bit of a pause there, but it was natural. And you said if it's because of a problem, I usually try to see the situation from another perspective. It was very good. So spoken English is not like written English. You can quickly shift concepts as long as it sounds natural and it did one mm -hmm. and you did a good job so in my head as the examiner especially if this is part three or if this were part three i'd be going hmm, okay this student's clearly a band eight for sure let's see let's see what he can do when i challenge him so i said can you give me an example of the former that means can you give me an example of what you said first because you gave me two situations of stress right the first one was the one oh. that's because of a problem. So can you give me an example of the latter would mean of the second yeah. opinion or second yeah. idea? Can you give me an example of the former means the first? 
And once I clarified that for you, you said, so a band nine would recognize that. In a band nine communication, you would recognize that, okay, he meant when I have a problem to see it from a different perspective. And then you said, sure, for example, um, and then you take a minute, which is normal, it's okay. That's not fluency, that's not a problem. It takes a minute to think. You said, my car isn't working right now. The battery is dead, which is good, a dead battery. Uh, yes, that's mm -hmm. the correct expression in English. Again, showing that you're at least a band eight. A couple of weeks ago, I was feeling really stressed because um, I don't have enough money to replace the battery. Now here, Juan, is where you want to think on your feet, which means think quickly, right? Mm -hmm. I, would have ch I would have finished this concept a little bit differently thinking about this concept. So I would have finished it like this, okay? I'm not saying mine's better than yours. I think it just would work better in this situation. So um, I was feeling really stressed because I don't have the money to replace it right now. But then I looked at it from a different angle. So if you want to change the word perspective, uh, you can yeah. say angle from a different uh, angle. And I realized I'm getting great exercise having to walk to work in school instead of driving. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty optimistic. <laughs> right, and it fits in with the concept of health, health and exercise, so I'm shifting yeah. back to that, right? Um, so try it, try this response, right? So um, a couple of weeks ago, I was feeling really stressed um, because my car battery is dead. I don't have enough money to replace it. But when I looked at it from a different angle, I realized I was getting some great exercise to walk to work and school instead of driving. Mm, sure, for example, uh, my car isn't working right now because the battery is dead. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, I was really uh, I was feeling really stressed about it, but then I realized I haven't. I'm having free exercise because I have to work to. I have to walk to work and school. Good. Okay. And nice that correct. Better? And that was nice correction there to make that clear. Good. That's exactly what you'd want to do, Juan. So Juan, right now you're in that phase of going from band eight to band nine. It's a lot of work but it's worth it mm -hmm. because that's the level of English that will get you into great jobs, that will help you to earn a lot of money, that will get you recognition in academics and school. So you definitely want to make that step from very good to excellent English. And that just means lots of practice and lots of critical thinking about the context yeah. and the situation, okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Juan, keep up the good work. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, bye for now. Thanks, Adam. See you. All right. Thumbs up for Juan. That was really good. So we do have a good uh, connection here, everybody. Um, so definitely uh, uh, continue to um, get in there and, and practice. Anahita is here with us. Anahita has been trying really hard. She's a member and a premium course user, and she's been trying really hard to, um, to, to practice a little bit. So let's give Anahita a chance. Anahita, are you ready? All right, I said to Anahita, I think last week I mentioned to her, if I remember correctly, that we would give her a chance. So let's see if we can make this connection, hopefully. Thank you for all the thumbs up, everybody. That's great. All right, Anahita, lots of rings. Check students, check to make sure your connection's working. Okay, Anahita, I'm not sure what's going on on your end there. Hello? Uh, hi, sir, I'm sorry, I was muting the YouTube, that's why I... I see, okay. How are you, Anahita? I'm fine, thanks, how about you, sir? I am doing fantastic, Anahita. All right, Anahita, are you ready for some questions? Yes, sir. All right, let's get into it. So, uh, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, what do you like to do when the weather is nice? 
uh, on such a dot when uh, uh, the weather is either on and uh, around uh, minus of six degrees uh, and it is uh, cat and dogs or uh, it is too hot such as around uh, 45 degrees I tend to uh, go f uh, I I want to what do you I like to, to do when the weather is nice okay okay I tend to uh, go for a walk not only to breathe fresh air but also to ex to witness the uh, and to witness the vivid experience of nature uh, by walking uh, leisurely across by scrolling leisurely across some greeneries uh, just yesterday I went to a recreational park with my friends let's talk about health what do you eat to be healthy? Uh, this is an interesting question. Let me think for a moment. Uh, I I, cons I consume uh, vegetables, fruit, uh, and legumes uh, because uh, in order to have uh, the essential elements of uh, essential elements such as uh, vitamins, carbo. Uh, uh, carbohydrates and uh, proteins. Uh, I just uh, yesterday I uh, had some uh, cheese and jam, and I included some uh, cucumbers in my uh, breakfast. Okay, let's stop there um, for a moment, Anahita. And I'll give you some feedback. Okay, so first of all, uh, so far that level. Uh, the examiner would consider a band 5.5, so between modest and fluent. The reason why the examiner here would likely not award a band 6 is because band 6 means can speak English effortlessly or with, with not great effort. Okay, And it definitely sounds to me like you are putting a lot of effort into your fluency. So you're, you know, you're, you're almost fluent and you're putting a lot of effort into it. That's fine. It will come with practice. So just lots and lots of speaking. Okay, You have to focus on using spoken English at least an hour to an hour and a half each day. Okay, so doing 10, 20 minutes is not enough. You have to do an hour, hour and a half of spoken English each day where you're not listening, but you're speaking. Okay, it's very, very important. Your vocabulary is good. Your comprehension is good. You clearly understand the questions. You have the vocabulary to answer the questions. Anahita, pay attention to the question. Okay, so if I ask you when the weather is nice, what do you like to do outside? Um, you said when the weather is either minus six degrees or it's raining cats and dogs. I was like, well, I don't know if that's nice weather. It sounds like, and so it sounded to me like you didn't clearly understand the question. When the examiner repeats the question, they interrupt you. It means that they think you don't understand the question or sometimes they just jump to the next question. So they don't repeat the same question. They interrupt you and then just go for the next question. So, but here I didn't go to the next question. I just gave you a second chance. So I decided, okay, I'll give you a second chance. So I repeated the question, okay? If you realize you made a mistake, Anahita, so you realize, oh yeah, okay, he's asking me about nice weather, then um, you can say this, okay? You can say, oh, uh, sorry, I misunderstood you. I'm a bit nervous. And then definitely reflect the question. Okay, definitely say whenever the weather is great, I like uh, to go for a walk. Now, I notice that you're using a lot of the correlative conjunctions, like not only, uh, but also, whether or, either or. It's good, keep practicing that, okay? It was a little bit unnatural at times, but it will become natural. So the way it becomes natural is through practice. So it's good that you're practicing that, okay? Um, so keep practicing that, that was good, all right? Um, keep your thoughts simple, witness the pleasures of nature. Um, a bit awkward, okay? So see beautiful nature, just simple, right? See beautiful nature. I said uh, vivid expressions of nature. Yeah, it's again, vivid expressions of nature, it's a bit strange. It's like you're a painter or something. Um, no, you want to just say beautiful nature. So I like to see beautiful nature, okay? It's much more natural. Mm -hmm. So you want to sound natural. Don't force 
language, okay? It's important. All right, Anahita, thank you so much uh, for volunteering. Uh, keep you, keep practicing. Remember, one hour a day speaking, okay? Lots and lots of speaking. Use, use the website for partners. If you can't find partners on the website, use another website. I don't care. The most important is just find people to talk to, okay? Okay, sir, do you think that I should take some in-person uh, speaking classes? Absolutely, yeah. So if you have the budget and you have the ability, take speaking classes. Absolutely, yes, definitely. Okay, okay sir. thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, Anahita. Bye, have a good day, sir. You too, bye. Okay, that was Anahita. Thumbs up, okay, all right. Find partners, all right? Uh, everybody, this speaking interface is not just to talk to me. Um, that would be just a very expensive kind of waste of time. I mean, it's great that we use it in these live classes, but we really built this system for everybody. It's student partner speaking. That's what we call this. It's not uh, talk to Adrian <laughs> speaking in live class, okay? So talk to each other, message each other. Hi, I'm practicing for the IELTS. I see you in the live classes all the time. Could we talk? Can we talk regularly? Can we talk two times a week for half an hour? Um, you have uh, some topics up here, everybody, uh, that you can practice with each other, okay? And you can click on those and it will give you um, some questions and we'll put some more up there. And on the website, you can find more as well. So uh, definitely use that, okay? All right. Let's take another person. Um, let's uh, see who's uh, who's here. Um, let's uh, let's go for uh, Suman. I don't think we've ever spoken to Suman, so I'm giving a little bit of priority to to newcomers today. Uh, Suman, are you ready? Okay, we want to encourage everybody to speak. And those who come back regularly, you should especially be reaching out to each other. There are some very, very good speakers among you, like Romelia and uh, Jose. You'd have a great conversation um, about what's life like uh, in Romania versus Argentina. All right, Suman. Yes. Let's see if we can reach out to Suman. Suman, sounds like you picked up. I don't hear your voice. Okay, everybody, make sure that when you pick up, you're using your audio through the website, not through YouTube. You want to mute YouTube. And if you've got the website going and YouTube going and you've got audio everywhere, it could really, um, and video, it could really uh, uh, slow your connection as well. So Suman, check out what's going on there, okay? All right. Um, let's try Nithia. I believe it's Nithia. Nithia, are you there? Okay, what a lovely name, Nithia. All right. If you're there, Nithia, let me know. Okay. I always message to make sure you haven't left to go to bed or for supper or sandwich. So, Nithia, if you're still there, let me know. All right, I don't know about Nithia. Uh, let's talk to Josie. Josie wants to tell her, her story. Josie, are you ready? Sure. Let's see if... Josie's there. I'm not sure what kind of a story we're in for, but uh, if Josie, if you're watching and you're still anxious to share, then let us know. We can hopefully get another person. And be patient, see students, you never know what happens, who answers, who doesn't, who picks up, who doesn't. So I'm kind of going through until I find somebody. Okay. Hello. Hi Josie, how are you? Oh, I'm so sad because uh, last Sunday I had my first IELTS test uh, and I did I um, I didn't get um, my ideal score, so just only <laughs> six points. 
Okay, Josie, let's give a background to everybody who's watching. So Josie, you're in China, if I'm not mistaken, right? Oh uh, yeah, I'm from China. Right, okay. Uh, can you share with us where you did your exam specifically? Like, did you do an IDP, a British Council, which city? Um, uh, I live in Shanghai, so I, uh, I took my IELTS test in Shanghai. Okay, and I mean, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes people think it matters if you do IDP or British Council, but just out of curiosity, was it an IDP testing center or was it a British Council testing center? Uh, it's IDP. Okay, so the big difference there is IDP is Australian, British Council is more UK, but technically there shouldn't be any differences. <clears throat> did you do the computer-based or did you do the um, paper-based test? Oh, I did the uh, computer-based because I think it's, uh, it's more convenient for me. It's, um, mm -hmm. I can get my score after uh, the test just with three days. Right, and if you can touch type, I definitely think it's actually the better choice. So, but you need to touch type. Um, Josie, uh, can you, if if you don't mind, um, can you give us your mm -hmm. scores in more detail? So, what was your listening, reading, writing, speaking score? Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, there are only uh three, uh. Uh, uh, two types of score. Uh, one is um, five point five for listening and writing, and six. Oh, sorry. Uh, five point five for listening and reading, and uh, six for writing and speaking. Interesting. Okay, and you got a six overall. Yeah, uh, so I, I think uh, it, it's the best score with uh, this separate score. Okay, notice something interesting there, Josie. So um, listening and reading are your comprehension, so your understanding of English, right? Speaking and writing are your production of English, so how well you're able to produce language in English. So it seems that your comprehension is a little bit under your production of English, so no, pay, uh, no, pay attention. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. According to yeah, the IELTS, I, oh, it's not according to me, not according to you. So before we, I don't want to, and my goal isn't to argue with you about it here. According to the IELTS test, it was, okay? So let's just stick with that idea. Um, so, uh, you know, you want to assess why that happened, right? And what you can do to uh, improve. Um, Josie, uh, are you planning to do the IELTS again? Yeah, sure. Uh, I have to uh, get at least seven Mm -hmm. uh, score. Okay, so Josie, what I strongly recommend you do, even just once, okay, is on the website, mm -hmm. um, send us a task one, task two writing through those green buttons. It'll cost you maybe mm -hmm. 30 bucks US for that and book an IELTS uh, speaking interview with me. Just one session, 30 minute session, 25 bucks. So spend about 50, 60 bucks US and figure out what's happening specifically, like where are you losing those marks uh, exactly. And then you can make a much better strategy of how to improve, what to look for, and what kind of tools or assistance you need, whether that's through our website, through your local IELTS training center, whatever, but that will give you a much clearer idea of why that happened. Because I feel like you're surprised um, with your score, which is which, which happens to a lot of people, they get surprised. So when you're surprised about your score, then you need to find out why, why is that happening, okay? Mm. All right, so don't feel bad, okay? Um, life is about how fast you get up. Not, yeah, I right? think I'm a positive person. I I uh, keep smile every day whenever I meet a um, tough. Yeah, <laughs> I and, get trouble. I have to smile to myself. Yeah, and you know you're young. Your brain is a learning machine, and it's an incredible learning machine. So. Um, you are learning, you are improving. The most important is that you do your best to maximize your efficiency. So maximize your use of time so that you can improve quickly, right? So that's what you should focus on is, you know, ask yourself the question, how do I efficiently or effectively improve my English, right? And that's what you have to identify. So uh, do you want to try a couple of these questions with me about health? 
Yeah, sure, sure. I'm excited. Okay, let's do it. Thank you for sharing your story, by the way. I'm sure it helps other people as well. So thank you for that. Hmm. All right, let's do it. So let's talk a bit about health. Um, why is it important to stay fit? Oh, because uh, staying fit uh, gives uh, us a lot of benefits. It's not only for our energy for working or studying, but also uh, it can make me uh, make us uh, keep positive um, motion every single day. Um, yeah, uh, for me, um, I often um, do yoga in every uh, every uh, seven a.m. because I think uh, doing yoga is a good way uh, to stretch to stretch my body and make me feel uh, more comfortable. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to stop there with that question, give you some feedback, give you some optimistic feedback. So first of all, that response is at least a 6.5, if not 7, maybe even more. Okay, so probably you're not getting 6 from part 1. Okay, so part 1, you're probably at a higher band level. I have a feeling it's a little bit later where you start losing your uh, band score, so maybe part 2, part 3. This is why it's a good idea to do a full um, speaking uh, assessment. Now, you did have a little bit of awkward language and you want to be concise, so don't over speak. But what I really liked about what you did is that you actually connected what you were just talking about, staying positive, and you said uh, staying fit gives us lots of benefits. Also, you watched your pronoun. So first you said gives us a lot of benefits. It's not only for our energy, but it can also help us with work and school. Um, and then you said it makes us keep positive emotions. It helps us stay positive. Can you just repeat after me? It helps us stay positive. It helps us stay positive. Yeah, so careful with that concise language, okay? And then you switch mm. to, for me, I often do, which is okay. You switch to a personal example, and I saw you correct there as well for the can make me, can make us. So that was a good correction, okay? So that was good. Mm. Answer, explanation, example. You have the right idea. You have the right strategy. You have to make it a bit more natural, avoid some of these awkward mistakes. And like I say, for part one, for this question, it's an easy six. I would say higher. It's a seven. Okay. All right. So your 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 thinking is right. It's lots of practice, Josie. Okay. Okay. All right, Josie. Again, thank you for sharing and uh, chin up forward. Okay. Hmm, okay. I will contact you by email. Send me an email for sure. Thank you so much for for being with me today. Mm, thank you. Have a rest of the day. Bye, Josie. Bye. All right. That was Josie. Thumbs up to Josie. Double thumbs up, right? She shared her um, story. And even though it wasn't a great story um, or, well, it was a great story. It wasn't a happy ending. Let's say that. So it wasn't a happy ending story. Um, you know, that we learn from our mistakes, right? So mistakes aren't the end of, of life. That We learn from them. And that's, there's, there's, great value there so again thank you Josie thank you to all my volunteers uh, students that's all the time I have for today but I will be back tomorrow uh, with um, task 2 writing and reading for subscribers so definitely subscribe uh, and definitely check out uh, our website uh, tons and tons of help there for you all you need to do is click that big red button take that first step to good learning Okay, uh, for general IELTS students, it's the green background. Again, click that red button there. Moderators, thank you. Uh, those students who didn't get a chance today, hang in there, practice with each other, like I said, and uh, make sure to come back uh, for the next class so that we can practice there as well, okay? If you have questions, send me an email, by all means, okay? We love getting emails, we love to help you out. Uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Your success is our success, and we are here to help you get there. Much love to all of you, wherever you are right now. I'm Adrian, signing out from Canada. Goodbye. <laughs>